Hey guys, welcome back to the Kuli Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we are going to be talking about Puma. They're inching closer and closer to becoming Barcelona's main sponsor, uh, their main kit sponsor. Um, we're going to be talking about that. And as well, we're going to be giving you an injury update regarding Alejandro Balde. What's the injury news regarding him? Since he did get injured against Athletic Club. But guys, before we get started on the video, make sure to follow me on all of my social media platforms. Everything's posted down below in the description. Go make sure to check me out over there. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Puma. Um, and this is reported by uh, Laia Tudel, uh, a, a journalist uh, for Catalonia Radio. Puma is the closest to sponsoring fc barcelona shirt um now pumas they're getting closer and closer to sponsor barcelona they're actually in advanced negotiations um and it's been rumored uh, let me just translate for the, uh this for you but puma is offering a package of nearly 200 million euros between permanent bonuses and you know those variables the club currently receives 30 million fixed plus variables from nike reaching 70 million in total and this is reported by adrian sanchez head of, of mas que pelotas another barcelona channel but i don't know if these figures are accurate but the main thing that we have to take away from this is that Puma is offering significantly more money than what Nike, um, what what Nike is offering Barcelona in their contract. And for this comment right here, it's a matter of a gamble at the moment with Barcelona's performances these days. Whoever is going to sponsor Barcelona is surely doing it as a charity or risk. Profit is not certain. Well, in regards to that, Barcelona um, is actually the fourth richest club in the world, uh, and this is based by revenue by the lot highest revenue generating football clubs in the world for the 2022-23 season and as you guys can see barcelona is in fourth place with uh, 800 million euros um uh of revenue now i know that barcelona's performances on the pitch at times is not very good and this season we can all agree that barcelona they haven't been able to replicate replicate the sensations that we felt last season but barcelona is still one of the biggest clubs in the world with one of the biggest fan bases in the world and taking into that account and taking into the history barcelona will always be a marketing and financial juggernaut of course we have death to take care of we have wages everything into account so all of those limitations can sometimes play into our financial uh, restrictions but do not confuse uh, anything. Barcelona, they still generate a ton of money. Just the thing is, as we generate tons of money, we also spend a lot of money. And so that's why at times you can see that Barcelona, they just don't have any FFP margin uh, available. Um, but continuing on with the Puma situation, Barcelona's legal services are, stud are studying whether it is possible to break the agreement with Nike and sign with another brand for next season. The most important option is Puma, although Nike is not throwing in the towel just yet. Now, this is very good because the Barcelona directives and the board, they think that the contract with Nike, it's, it's not up to par uh, on the value which... Uh, the board think that the club is at. They they think that that contract is outdated and they would like, if they were going to renew terms with Nike, it would have to be uh, a new evaluation and looking at for higher figures in which we can uh, ingress um, some, some revenue. And that's a very good thing for Barcelona. And as it says right here, Barcelona's legal administration is studying whether it is possible to terminate the Nike contract. A serious choice is Puma. Now, if Puma does become Barcelona's main kit sponsor, uh, this is a concept kit of what it would look like. Now, guys, I'm actually a big fan of this. Uh, you're just looking at the gold on the sides and just looking at how clean it looks. I'm actually t a t uh, totally in favor. But the main thing about you know uh, kits, it doesn't really matter who's our kit sponsor. All of these, you know, like Adidas, Nike, Under Armour, they're gonna produce some very nice kits. At times, it's gonna be you know, a little bit shady, but in general, they are going to produce some nice kits. And so it's all about who can offer the most money. And especially in these moments, personally, they definitely need the money. But guys, let me know your guys' thoughts on Puma potentially becoming Barcelona's main kit sponsor. I'm actually excited for that just because of what the new revenue can bring for us. 
but um, it's definitely interesting. But guys, next topic, I want to be talking about Alejandro Balde. Now, Alejandro Balde, he did get injured against Athletic Club in Barcelona's 4-2 loss um, in the Copa del Rey. And at first, it was reported that he was going to be anywhere between four to six weeks uh, out from the pitch, now from the team. But apparently, uh, Alejandro's uh, Balde season is over. Now, when I say about that, I'm talking about this. Uh, as per multiple reports, Alejandro's Balde season could be over if he decides to undergo surgery. Conservative treatment will allow him to play this season, but higher risk of relapse. Internal debate at the club, final decision in the next few days. Now, I'm I'm personally not a fan of this like conservative treatment because we've seen what it has done to other players. We've seen how it has affected Umtiti. Uh, he took that conservative treatment in order to go to the World Cup and look what happened after. If you look at uh, Ansu Fati, he decided to go for the conservative treatment. What happened after? Same thing. Look at Dembele, conservative treatment. Um, and then what happened after? Just players taking these conservative treatment, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it puts like a band-aid over the problem, but doesn't necessarily heal it. And so I, I'm glad the club is recommending Alejandro Balde to get surgery just because young players, especially players who are this young, have to focus on their long-term career. Um, Umtiti, he was sort of a different case, but even still, he was, um, you know, putting that World Cup uh, in, in front of his career, and that's understandable, you know, like a World Cup is a World Cup. But for Alejandro Balde, who still has his entire career yet, uh, you know, to play out, it... it you have to play it safe, and, th and that's why I think um, going and undergoing surgery is the right move. But another person who is in charge of the decision as well, who's taking part, is actually his agent, Jorge Mendez. Uh, this is reported by Javi Miguel. Alejandro Balde has not put the decision on whether he should have surgery or not into the hands of his agent, uh, Jorge Mendez. He will decide. So Alejandro Balde has put the decision on whether he should have surgery or not into the hands of his agent, Jorge Mendez. He will decide. Now, as this comment says, yeah, he better get surgery if he doesn't want to end up like Ansu Fati. Now, hopefully he does get surgery and um, he it, it goes well. But how can this affect Barcelona and then the next upcoming games? Well, who, who would be playing in that position? How would it affect um, Barcelona's style of play? Well... You have both Balde out for basically if he does get the surgery for the entirety of the season, and Marcus Alonso he is out still four to six weeks uh, for him to, to recover, and that just means that both Hector Fort and Joao Cancelo they're going to be rotating in that left back position. It's going to be Joao Cancelo and Hector Fort sharing minutes in that position, and due to Hector Fort's fantastic performances so far and his two cameos. Um, both against in the Copa del Rey, uh, you know, against the at 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 club, and I think I believe it was against Barros. You know, we could be seeing a lot more of the youngster. And guys, I'm such a fan of him. in In his game against at the club, he was absolutely phenomenal. He was one of the one of the few positives that we can take from that match. And later on tonight, guys, we are going to be making you know another episode talking uh, more about the game and just analyzing you know. What's going on with Barcelona at the moment? And, you know, analyzing that game in a little bit more detail. But um, in regards to that left back position, it's most likely that Joel Cancelo is going to be playing there. And Hector Four, he's just going to be rotating, you know, between right back and left back and just giving Cancelo some rest. And in regards to that, you know, having these youngsters emerge, does that mean that Barcelona they no longer need to go out for a, a right back? And um, that, that's something that's very good. That's something that La, La Masia can bring for you guys. Um, for, well, it can bring for the club. But guys, that was it for the Barcelona news of the day. What do you guys make of Barcelona uh, having advancing negotiations with um, with Puma in order to become the Barcelona's uh, kit sponsor? And what do you guys make of Hector Fort um, gaining some prominence and as well as Alejandro Balde's uh, injury? Uh, unfortunately, he's going to be out for the rest of the season. Uh, we wish him a speedy recovery and as well, him um him you know able to recover well uh but guys that was it for the video thank you guys all for watching and as always guys remember like subscribe and comment in the next video